Hello comrades and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of The Communist. Now as I speak you should be hearing some brand new theme music for the podcast, but that's not the only thing that's new about this episode. In fact we're launching a brand new weekly podcast series called Towards the RCP, which is going to run weekly between now and the founding congress of the Revolutionary Communist Party in May of this year, so about 10 weeks time. Each week we're going to kick things off with a brief discussion about the latest key political events, whether that's in Britain or internationally, and then we're going to delve straight into various questions pertaining to building the party. In other words, how communists can connect Marxist ideas to the living class struggle and build an organization around them. So that could be questions including the revolutionary press, revolutionary finance, building communist cells in workplaces, colleges, schools, and so on. All of that is going to be discussed in the coming 10 weeks, and maybe even past that, who knows. So for this episode, for the first episode, we're joined by Ben Glinetsky, who is a member of the executive committee of the soon-to-be Revolutionary Communist Party, and is also the National Secretary. Hi, Ben. How's it going? All right, Jack. Yeah, all good. Thank you. Yeah, you had a good week this week? Yeah, very good. It's been meeting and talking to various comrades around the country, but catching up on my reading, the new Lenin book. I'm sure oh, nice. you're doing the same. How far through are you? A uh, couple of hundred pages in. Yeah, uh, It's nice good one. going, yeah. Enjoy. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it as well. And I've heard a lot of good things from the comrades across the section about uh, yeah, their reading groups and so on. Mm. Um, so yeah, I thought for this episode, we'd kick things off uh, with you know basically how to build the Revolutionary Communist Party. Obviously, we've got over a thousand members uh, across the country, as well as you know many supporters and sympathizers mm. who are now getting their teeth stuck into this campaign. Uh, to found the RCP. Obviously, we've got our founding Congress uh, in May. So mm-hmm. it's not long now, really, is it? It's how long? 10 weeks? Is that yeah, right? 10, 11 weeks. We're 10 and a half yeah, weeks. Clock's ticking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, I mean, the first thing I want to ask, really, I think our listeners would like to know, why is it that we've launched the Revolutionary Communist Party? Why are we launching this campaign? And, and why is it happening now? Mm. Well, it's to do with the political situation in the world at the moment, isn't it? I mean, mm. you look at the situation. It doesn't take much. You just need to read the newspapers, have a look on social media, and you can see in every possible direction, all the warning lights are flashing. It's like a a plane that's going down and you can Mm -hmm. see the dashboard is just glowing red with uh, danger. I mean, right now, obviously, as we're recording this, the uh, Israeli military is imminently going to attack Rafa. And that could be the spark that sets the whole Middle East alight. And talking of kind of military adventures and crisis, um, <clears throat> the the Ukrainian army has obviously just mm. had a major retreat, and that's a massive defeat for NATO. I think. Yeah. I, th- I think this is going. I think this is really the that's a key town, you know. And, and this is Russia advancing through, despite everything NATO and the Ukrainians have thrown at it. This is going to be a big defeat for for U.S. imperialism, mm-hmm. basically. And that is going to have massive repercussions all over the world, and including in Ukraine, because all these people, workers, young people, who have been sent to the front lines to die in the interests of US imperialism, are obviously going to be absolutely furious. It's going to have massive, potentially even revolutionary implications Mm -hmm. across a big part of the world. And then, I mean, in every direction, economically, environmentally, and politically, obviously, the ongoing saga this year is is Trump looking Mm. to get (laughs) re-elected again. So like, there's just crisis in every, every direction that you look. And I think the main, it's not just that there's crisis, it's that there is no solution being offered. In no country is anyone standing up and saying, yeah, I've got the answer to this. And no more is that the case than in Britain, in fact. Well, we've got an election this year. The government, obviously, the Tories have nothing to offer. We're very likely, almost inevitable, it seems, to get a Starmer Labour government. Is are they is he offering anything different? Obviously, I don't not. think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it doesn't take much to realize that he's basically even saying that quite openly. Things we're going to make have to make hard choices. Think nothing's going to be any yeah. different, you know. And completely reneging upon the promises for a green prosperity plan, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah. you know, billions of pounds of investment promised, and now it's been scaled back to what crumbs basically, which probably won't even see the light of day. Is that like he's yeah. breaking his promises before he even gets into power? So what is going to happen when he's actually in power? Mm. This is what we've got to prepare for. This is the perspective, you know, like there's nothing we can do. We are, look, we're, as you say, we're about 1,100 people right now in the UK. We're not, we're not a mass political party or not anything yet, like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> um, and so it's not going to, you know, we, we can't 
we can't stop a Labour government. We can't mm -hmm. do anything like that. We're not big enough for that. There's going to be a Labour government. I think that's pretty, uh, that's pretty likely. The question is what we're going to do when mm -hmm. that uh, when that happens. What's going to happen when the, when the Labour Party starts attacking the, the workers? What are the unions going to do? And what are people like us going to say when that situation happens? You can feel basically, you can feel all the anger that exists. There's a lot of anger in society about all different, uh, all these different crises that there are. There's a lot of anger and it's kind of, it's beneath the surface, like a spring that's getting tighter and mm -hmm. tighter and tighter. You can feel it ready to explode, but where, what direction is it going to go in? It's not going to be uh, in, through, the, through the direction of the Starmer Labour Party. Uh, or anything like this. So, so what is the what is the way forward? People are looking for an answer, looking for an alternative. In the past, it might have expressed itself through the Communist Party. I'm talking decades ago, you know, mm. like the the kind of old traditional communist. It had tens party. of thousands of members and supporters back yeah. in the day, right? Yeah, it used to yeah. be it used to be this big force, and and when people were looking for something to something to do, some some protest, some way to fight the system, they used to decades ago look towards that old Communist Party. But today, that is really, I mean, it's a very weak force numerically, but that's beside the point. It's more actually politically extremely mm -hmm. weak. Yeah. It, it doesn't really offer anything except trying to paint a smiley face on capitalism. It doesn't offer a real alternative. Mm -hmm. So this is basically, this whole situation is why we're founding the Revolutionary Communist Party. Mm -hmm. Because there is a there's crisis everywhere, a crying need for an alternative. No one is offering anything. We have to make a clean break with all of that. We're opposed to the system. We're opposed to capitalism, opposed to imperialism. And we're opposed to the the kind of reformist left, the ones who just try and tweak capitalism around the edges and so on. We, we, we have nothing to do. Anything that you consider to be left wing or anything like this, that's not us. We're something different to that. We're the revolutionary communist party. It's a clean break from all of this stuff. We offer a real alternative. That's the idea behind it. Mm, yeah, thanks for explaining that, Ben. I think already this is uh, getting a bit of attention. I've noticed... Um, you know, on paper sales recently in the local area in East London, where my branch is, you know, people have been coming up to us and saying, yeah, I am a communist mm, and I yeah. do want to get organized, you know. And I'm talking about, you know, young workers, school students, just ordinary people are seeing the front cover of our new paper, The Communist, and they're approaching us to join. In fact, last night, some guy just walked up and gave us 20 pounds. No questions asked. He just yeah, gave yeah. us 20 pounds. And he said uh, to us that you guys are the only hope that we have. Mm. I've heard That's so the, many yeah. I've heard so many examples like that. Mm. Uh, There's recently. this real groundswell I feel of, of 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 a yearning for a political alternative. And that yeah. I think is the proof of this of this anger that is right yeah. there beneath the surface. That's finding no expression. Starmer's not expressing that. The unions aren't really expressing that uh, or where they are it's only in a very partial way. People are looking for something else and and that's what we're trying to offer. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so obviously, uh, for the past, what is it now, 31 years, mm -hmm. uh, since 1992, I believe, uh, you know, our comrades of the international Marxist tendency in Britain, uh, you know, have been organized uh, under the name Socialist Appeal. And obviously, we you know, did various, uh, um, yeah, various things. We did, you know, work inside the Labour Party, for example. We produced a, a journal uh, and a newspaper, all these different things. Um, and a question that I have is, you know, what makes Socialist Appeal, what makes, you know, the, the old uh, you know, work that we did different from what we're trying to achieve uh, right now. What is that defining difference, would you say? Yeah, I, th I mean, that is an important question. I think you can, you can see Socialist Appeal as, as our prehistory, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was founded in the 90s, a difficult time to be a revolution in <laughs> the Marxist camp. Collapse of the USSR. <laughs> exactly. Not unrelated, yeah. actually, to why it was, you know, there was the, the split that preceded the founding of Socialist Appeal in the first place. And that was all part of it. And then you had a boom through the 90s mm -hmm. and, and, and the early first half of the 2000s. This was a difficult time to be mm -hmm. a revolution. Really, the, the goal, the, the role of socialist appeal was to try and hold things together, keep yeah. that flame of Marxism burning, try and educate a new layer, a new generation in these ideas mm -hmm. and sort of assemble a, a core cadre of people at that time. And then obviously there was this... Uh, we we realized that there was there was a mood there was an interest in Marxism in, re in revolutionary ideas especially mainly among young people and especially among mm -hmm. students. We set up Marxist societies all over the country, and that started with just one or two, and it it's come to now encompass fifty fifty five Marxist mm -hmm. societies at unis on campuses around the country. That's and that was a massive step forward, and that that is what allowed us to kind of assemble the the basic cadres the the, the pre a prehistory basically of our organization was characterized by that uh educating this whole layer of young people in the ideas that, like i myself for example was recruited through a marxist society um <clears throat> a lot of the a lot of the, the comrades of what is soon to be the rcp mm -hmm. came through that route 
now, of course, a lot of those people have, uh, have grown up and are workers <laughs> and this kind of thing. And, and we're in, and the situation has changed, basically. That's, that's what's happened. Socialist Appeal was this kind of period where we were doing patient propaganda work, mm-hmm. educating a, a new generation in the ideas. What we see now is this, it is a, a deepening of the crisis. It's spilling over into every sphere of society. And the impact that that is having on the consciousness of a much wider layer of people, causing them to draw radical, even revolutionary conclusions, I think that's a much more profound process that's going on in society right now. Mm-hmm. And there's a wider layer of people who are interested in this. That's why we need to found the RCP, is to reach that wider layer. It's, we're not just reading groups and, and discussion groups anymore on campuses. I think we can keep those up. There's still Definitely. a lot of interest. Yeah. But we can also, now the situation is changing a bit, we can go beyond that. Uh, and we can, we can turn outwards. We can be a bit more agitational. We can get stuck in to the class struggle. Uh, we can be openly communist. People are interested in this. They, they wanna, they're looking for an alternative, a radical alternative. We can say we're communist. And we can say we're class fighters. That's the main thing. We don't just read the books, although that is extremely important. We take those ideas and we will stand up at a picket line or on a demonstration. We'll give a speech. We'll stand up in our classrooms. We'll stand up at work and fight back against things and try and encourage and educate other people on how to fight back and why it's important to do that and be that point of reference for all these people who are angry who are out there at the moment. So that's that's the difference, I think, between what we were doing as Socialist Appeal and what we're going to do as the Revolutionary Communist Party. Mm-hmm. I think we've already seen uh, a couple of examples uh, of this kind of new approach of being, uh, you know, uh, an active fighting organization uh, mm. with the example of uh, Port Talbot yeah. in, uh, in South Wales. I'm sure we'll discuss this maybe in a future episode of this series. Um, but yeah, you know, the comrades there saw that there was this, um, you know, this jobs massacre basically impending, you know, thousands of jobs at the uh, Port Talbot Steelworks owned by a big multinational called Tata. And, you know, instead of, you know, just uh, writing an article about it and commenting upon it from the sidelines, they decided, look, we've got, you know, dozens of comrades in South Wales. Let's wage a bit of a campaign around this. That's we'll right, take yeah. this slogan of Occupy the Steelworks to the town. We'll make a banner. We'll do door knocking. We'll do stalls, intervene in trade union meetings. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they've, uh, it's been going for a few weeks now, but the comrades there have, uh, I think, had quite modest success, I would say. And that is a really good example, wouldn't you say? Yeah, the that, that yeah. is exactly it. That, that, is, that is fully like RCP methods. That's very <laughs> different to what we were doing as Socialist Appeal. Uh, and I think that's, that's the kind of attitude that the RCP needs to have. That's the kind of party we're going to be. Mm-hmm. Not just one that, that discusses things and comments on it, uh, but that actively gets involved. And I think that example that we've got in Port Talbot we need to replicate all over the country, everywhere. Workers are under attack and, and young people are having a tough time. There's housing crisis. There's all sorts. Everywhere there's anger, RCP members need to try and tap into that mm-hmm. and use that anger to, to raise political questions, to link all these individual struggles to the broader political point, which is that the capitalist system is in crisis. It mm-hmm. cannot be reformed. It has to be overthrown. That's what the RCP is all about. Mm-hmm. That's what we've got to get stuck into. Yeah, and I think uh, issue two of our newspaper, The Communist, is a is a perfect example of, of how we're approaching this yeah. work, raising political questions. You know, the comrades have been uh, submitting uh, answers to questions that they've heard on the doorstep when they're talking to people. You know, can occupation really work? What about the environment? All of these different questions. They've been collecting quotes and interviews from the workers at the steelworks. That's right, it's a real publishing. tool. It's a tool yeah. for getting stuck in. Basically, it's. It's, a, it's an actual dialogue between mm. RCP members and, and the working class more broadly. It's not mm-hmm. just us sort of putting out a leaflet or a newspaper and saying, here's what we think. It's, this, it's listening to what, what is going on, what are the questions that come out, discussing it through and collectively raising the, the political mm-hmm. questions. And that's exactly what a Bolshevik organization should do. Yeah, that's exactly that's what Lenin was striving to do. Uh, you know, back in, 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 in Russia during the 1900s and 1910s and so on. That's the model that we're basing ourselves mm. yeah, upon. Yeah, that's the one. Um, so the next thing I want to ask then uh, is maybe just to give a bit more of an international perspective on things. It's not just a thing in Britain that we're doing, uh, launching the, the RCP, having this, uh, you know, bold communist turn in our work. There are also some other examples from our international, from our different uh, sections. So I was wondering, yeah, do you want to go through, I know you've mm. been to the uh, meeting of the international executive committee of the IMT quite recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you have any uh, interesting uh, tidbits to tell us? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's an almost endless list of, of countries <laughs> where we're doing something of this kind. Um, so I won't go through it all. I mean, the one that really stands out is Switzerland, actually. Mm. Because the point is, this mood that I described, look, we started off by talking about 
about Palestine, about Ukraine, about Russia, about like this mood that exists of disgust with the establishment and no real solution being offered. That is the case in every country, more or less, pretty much without exception. So that anger that exists is, is, is there everywhere. And so everywhere that our international exists, we are finding the same kind of results when we present ourselves in this mm -hmm. way and when we turn outwards and get stuck into the class struggle and openly and boldly call ourselves communists. But the, the example that stands out to me the most is Switzerland. Yeah, the you wouldn't expect that, would you? Well, the land of the banks and the uh, luxury chocolate and so yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why it's, it's such an interesting example because there the comrades have, yeah, they, they did what we did last year as well. They put up loads of posters and stickers. Are you a communist? Get organized and so on. And they, they got an incredible response. I think it's, it is because it's the land of the, the bankers and all the rest of it. Like, because there's no, it seems like there's never really going to be any change. That doesn't stop people getting angry under the surface because living conditions mm -hmm. are falling there, same as everywhere yeah. else. And, and suddenly up pops our comrades who say, yeah, we're going to organize a communist organization. And they are absolutely flying in terms of their growth and their development. And they're founding a revolutionary communist party just the week after our our founding congress mm. is their founding congress and it's not just like if, if you and me are surprised about how how amazing that is in switzerland <laughs> the uh the swiss press yeah is also <laughs> extremely surprised every single major uh, newspaper has had it on the uh, in, in that in yeah. the website that's yeah. right they, they, advertising they, us basically yeah they couldn't <laughs> believe it they couldn't believe it. a revolutionary communist party in switzerland what, a, what an outrage you know this is what they thought when they put it on their front pages Oh, everyone will surely be outraged by this. The Swiss comrades have said it's been the best possible publicity <laughs> for them. And they've had loads more inquiries as a result about joining, getting involved and stuff. So, uh, yeah. And, it, and the thing is, right, if that is happening in Switzerland, it's also happening in Canada. The yeah. weekend just gone, uh, our comrades in Canada hosted, I think it's the biggest Marxist communist event in North America, probably, this Montreal winter school that they host. Mm -hmm. And they had over 600 people there. Uh, an incredible thing and and that also had comrades from the US but but across the US across Canada and Canada is another country where there's not that much happening in terms of the class struggle but still they are developing massively on the basis of presenting themselves openly and boldly as communists and that is the that's the way forward you know and if it can if it works in Switzerland and it works in Canada then there's I think you could I think it's fairly safe to say that there's not really many countries where it won't work where that anger isn't present mm. that we can tap into and that's why not just in this or that country this or that section of the international but the whole international we've been known as the international Marxist tendency for a long time the IMT mm -hmm. but there is a proposal from the international executive committee to rename ourselves the revolutionary communist international to really tap into that mood and, and characterize this this change that we're making in our work mm -hmm. and that's going to be discussed at a, a world conference of the whole international in the summer and hopefully voted on i certainly will be voting for it and uh and we can kind of give the international this new image this new approach as the revolutionary communist international mm -hmm. and yeah just to let our listeners know uh yeah this event that ben referred to the, the world school of communism which will also be a conference uh, as well uh, that's going to be taking place between the 10th and the 15th of june and yeah uh, our comrades and, and listeners can uh, find out more about this and actually sign up to attend the uh, yeah, the sessions right. at the uh, school of communism.com which is an excellent uh, website mm -hmm. uh, props to the international for, for reserving that one <laughs> um so yeah that's school of communism.com and it's taking place in 110 days apparently there's a little counter on the website oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, nice. so yeah time to get reading and get preparing for that um so anyway, yeah, I was uh, yeah thinking we can move on then to the to the real question that I'm sure is on everyone's uh, everyone's lips, all of our comrades, listeners, and supporters who are uh, who are at home right now. They'd be thinking, okay, great, we've discussed the international situation, the crisis of capitalism, the this need for a political alternative, and all these examples that you've mentioned. But what can we do about mm. it? What can you know one person, you know, whether they're in a big city or you know a village in the in the middle of nowhere. What can they do now, between now and uh, May, uh, to help found the RCP? Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the main question. And look, as as you put it, like any individual can help us with this mm -hmm. because the fact is, I'm I'm certain that we're right in what we say, which is that there is this layer of people. It's not necessarily tens of millions, but I think it is a lot of people in this country are really pissed off with the situation. <laughs> they are looking for something different, some alternative. And they want to get stuck in. They want to do something. 
all you need to do, even as an individual, is is make yourself known <laughs> as a communist, yeah. as someone. You just need to stand up and and scream it from the rooftops. I am founding a branch of the Revolutionary Communist Party in this place, in this school, in this workplace, in this on this campus, in this village, in my neighborhood, in my block of flats. Doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You just need to get it out there and talk to people about this stuff. There's lots of ways you can do it. You can literally, physically talk to people, talk to your friends. I've had so, I've had so many stories of people who they they find out about us, they join, they get involved, and they say, "I wish I'd found out about you a long time before." They tell their friends who they've talked politics with for a long time, and they say, "Look, I found the organization that we've been looking for. I found the party we've been looking for." Mm -hmm. And then their mates join as well. That's the way to do it. So talk to as many people as you can about it. What we can do is, if you're in, if you're on your own, I mean, if you if you're in a place where we've already got a branch, fantastic. You can join the branch mm -hmm. and you can help to develop it. And the aim of that, the aim of every branch that we currently have, and we've got about 120 of them, the aim of every branch that we currently have needs to be to build another branch wherever they are, split mm -hmm. into, recruit enough people that we can split into two and have a second branch and develop new fields of work uh, and new peripheries and so on, new places that we can get stuck in and, and spread our ideas and, and our methods and stuff. But um, if you're in a place where we don't have anything, then, then get in touch and we will send you some copies of our newspaper. We'll mm -hmm. send you leaflets. We'll send you posters you can put up in your window or whatever. We'll send you stickers, for mm -hmm. example, advertising the party. You can, we'll, we'll send you everything you need to reach as wide a layer of people as possible. We'll give you advice on, on, on even like mm. stuff to post on social media to, and, and where to post it to try and get the biggest reach mm. to meet as many people as we possibly can. Um, it's a, we've even got, we advertise as a starter pack for building a cell of the Revolutionary Communist mm -hmm. Party. So that's papers, uh, stickers, leaflets, and also a copy of the magazine as well. So that's that you right. can theoretically arm yourself and educate yourself to be able to raise these ideas confidently. Uh, so yeah, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes of this podcast to, uh, to find the uh, communist starter pack, the communist cell starter pack. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've got plenty of examples that we can go through, I think, of, you know, of this kind of work. I'm sure in the future, actually, we'll have an episode perhaps on you know, how to build a cell in your school or your workplace and so on. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you have any examples that spring to mind uh, of this kind of work? I mean, one thing that I read uh, recently in issue two of The Communist was an example in uh, Lancashire, uh, where there is a junior doctor um, who, who joined very recently, mm. I think two or three weeks ago, on the back of you know, seeing you know, the relaunch of the, of the organization, seeing the paper and so on. Uh, he joined and then immediately he set to work, you know, bringing the paper into his workplace. He works in, in various hospitals around, mm. the, uh, around Lancashire. And in the space of two or three weeks, he's managed to recruit, I think, two people yeah, now. Right. Uh, he's sold about six papers in his workplace. He's now, you know, discussing in his workplace and even actually working on producing an agitational leaflet, mm. you know, calling on um, his colleagues to, you know, campaign to kick capitalism out of the NHS, to reverse privatization, for full nationalization, all of these different things. That's just a glimpse, I think, of what can be achieved given the current conditions, given the current, especially in somewhere like the NHS, where there's a massive amount of, uh, of discontent of people, yeah, just pissed off at things basically feeling like they're falling apart. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, are there any more examples like that that we can point no, to that's to it. inspire I mean, our listeners? Yeah. There, there are, there's so many examples like that. You could say the same. There's a lot I've heard of, of quite a lot of schools where, you know, somewhat, for example, there's a school in South London mm. where... <clears throat> A uh, young lad met us on a. I think we. I think the comrades were just selling papers on the street, whatever. Just hold, holding a little recruitment stall outside a tube station, and he came up and was asking a bit about, specifically about Palestine. And then he came with us uh, to some of the Palestine demonstrations, and he joined. And then he went to school, and he started talking about Palestine and this kind of question with his teachers. Uh, his teachers were were interested in what he had to say offered him the opportunity to to give, I think actually I was told, a series of assemblies to his <laughs> school on this question. He's talked to his mates at school. He's sold them the paper. He's arranged a kind of meeting group, a little discussion group or a kind of yeah, a group of communists basically at the school. And they've been, they found a sympathetic teacher who'll let him use the his classroom for meetings and so on. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that is possible. I've, and that is, I mean, that's one school in South London. I've heard a similar report from a school uh, in West London. You can point to, point to these things everywhere. Uh, and, and you can say the same for universities. We've just, we're having a go at something in, we've just set up a new cell actually of, of the RCP, soon to be RCP in Kingston, South West London, 
where again like there's a big university there it's not a place where we've really had anything before but the doors are wide open it's so easy mm. because people are so into this kind of stuff as long mm. as it's presented in a in a clear way in a in a radical revolutionary way which is what our ideas are mm. people are looking for that and you just got to go about it with a bit of energy and yeah kingston south london lancaster Port Talbot. Anyway, mm. you can find people who are interested in this stuff and who say, yeah, I, I want to build a, a cell of the RCP, a branch of the RCP. Mm. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're getting it. I mean, there's a, could, there's endless examples. You know, in the east of England, we've set up between five and seven cells in the last wow. couple of months <laughs> alone. You know, like there's, there's people left, right and center looking for this stuff. Yeah, excellent. I think what really shines through through all of these examples is that, uh, yeah, the key is audacity. You know, mm. it's not about you know being embarrassed or trying to hide it or being a bit sneaky about it it's just going out there understanding that other people are looking for these kinds of things you know i think and that's yeah. that is important Look, the swiss comrades said this as well uh, when when i was talking with them they said the the swiss national character yeah. is similar <laughs> to the british they, in that you know it's shy it's reserved it's quiet and it's it's a fear of social awkwardness and mm -hmm. embarrassment and so on uh it's not like I don't know, other national characters that you might get a more Latin kind of national character or I think <laughs> or the French, the fiery yeah, French. Yeah, this yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> and they said a, a really key thing that they've been working on is getting over that, like drop yeah. that, that shyness, basically, that social awkwardness, that embarrassment. They've been saying they've been getting up on, uh, on their campuses, getting up on the tables at the cafeterias and just shouting about giving a little speech about mm -hmm. communism, going down the going down the, the tube trains and talking about communism to people, offering them the newspaper mm -hmm. and saying, would you like to join the RCP? Just get over it. As if we're going to hold back the development of the revolutionary party that could actually change the world because of a little bit of social awkwardness. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not having that. We've got to get over that. We've got to get out there, be bold, because that is the, there are all these people out there, isolated, hating the world, angry at the world, looking for some way to change it. We can connect with them, but they have to be able to find us. They have mm -hmm. to be able to see us. That's why it's important to stand up. How on earth are they going to find us if you're not bold and open and willing to discuss it with people? That's what's needed. Mm -hmm. That's what the RCP's got to be all about. That's how we're going to found it. Yeah. Just like the French revolutionary uh, Georges Danton said, audacity, more audacity, always audacity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good place, I think, to round things off, unless there's anything else that you want to, uh, no, no, want to say. No? Yeah, so what will we discuss next week, do you think? Next week, we're going to talk about how to use the newspaper, how to use the communists mm. to build the RCP. What role can that newspaper play? I mean, this example you gave of this doctor in Lancashire is a really good example. We're going to develop that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we'll wrap things up there. But before you go, just a few quick announcements. So if what you've heard today in this episode has inspired you to go out and build a communist cell of your own, then you should get in touch with us immediately. Head to communist.red, our new website, where you can apply to join the Revolutionary Communist Party and we'll put you in touch with your nearest branch. And if there isn't a branch near you, then we'll provide you with the support and the resources you need to set one up. And in the meantime, if you'd like to prepare yourself politically, then we'd encourage you to subscribe to our newspaper, The Communist, which we're striving to build into a genuine workers' newspaper, a voice for the working class. If you head to communist.red forward slash subscribe, you can find all the information you need. We also have a special full communist combination deal, which includes our theoretical magazine, In Defense of Marxism, which contains more in-depth, long read, theoretical and historical articles. It's an essential tool to have in your arsenal as a communist. The latest issue features an array of articles on the life and ideas of Vladimir Lenin including articles covering his philosophical studies, as well as his and Trotsky's struggle against the growing bureaucracy in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution. So definitely check that out. And if you'd like to support our campaign to found a revolutionary communist party, then we would encourage you to give a strong financial foundation for the RCP by donating to our special party launch fund. We've set ourselves a target of raising £20,000 in public donations between now and the May Congress. We've currently raised about £5,000 due to the determination and sacrifice of our supporters and members, but we need to do a lot more. So we would encourage you to first of all dig deep, give what you can. We've had plenty of amazing donations including £100, £200 and even £400. This is the kind of sacrifice that Bolsheviks based themselves upon. 
And once you've done that, we would also encourage you to ask your friends, your family, your co-workers, anyone who's sympathetic to the cause of communism to also consider donating. This is perhaps the most important thing that you could spend your time and your money on. So if you want to donate, head to communist.red forward slash donate, where you can also set up a regular donation as well. And one last call out before we bring things to an end. We want to hear from you. Just like the communist newspaper is brimming with reports and questions from the branches and from individual comrades, we also want this podcast series to feature questions and reports from the branches. So if there's a question that you have about building the RCP, or a report about a successful day school, or an intervention at a demonstration or a picket line that you think that other comrades could learn from, then please do get in touch with us. If you head to communist.red forward slash submit, there'll be a special category on the submissions form to submit questions and reports to the podcast. Please send in any submissions in the form of a recording, like a voice note, and we might play it on the show and respond to it. So yeah, all of those things that I've mentioned, you can find the links to those in the show notes of this podcast. And yeah, before we end, thanks very much to our listeners for tuning in. Make sure you stay subscribed for regular episodes covering Marxist theory, revolutionary history, current events, and now also party building as well. Brought to you by Marxist Voice, the podcast of The Communist. See you next week.